Hi, I'm Angela James, and this is my story uh, about the Grinch who stole the book fair. And this sort of started as a little gift that I had wanted to give to um, Mrs. Donaldson and Mrs. Streaming, um, the Mr. Grinch and Max, um, as additions to their collection of critters for the library. And I needed a card to go with my gift. So I thought it would be fun to just jot down a couple of Grinchy lines for a Christmas card and tuck it in with them and, and give this gift to them. Um, but before I knew it, I had more than a few sentences, and I had an actual Grinchy paragraph, which was a little clumsy for a card. So one thing led to another, and we had just finished packing up uh, the book fair, and as I thought more and more about things that I could say, I realized that there were several things about the story that I could adapt for a library theme, and then it became kind of a fun activity and a challenge to see how many things about the story that I could change and still keep the story recognizable. So what started off as a few sentences and then a paragraph became an actual full-blown parody of The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. And after several pages, I realized that these two busy ladies would never have time to sit down and read this story themselves probably, so I arranged an audience with a first grade class and was able to read that out loud and there came the story. How the Grinch Stole Book Fair. Adapted from Dr. Seuss's book. By ABE parent, Angela James Harrington. Every child in the school liked reading a lot. But the Grinch, who did not come to school, did not. The Grinch hated reading the whole book for a season. Now please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be perhaps that his glasses were tight. It could be that his color dot wasn't quite right. But I think that the most unlikely reason of all may have been that his own book collection was small. Whatever the reason, his books or his glasses. He scowled at the children as they came from their classes staring down from his shelf with a sour grinchy look at each child in mind with a colorful book for he knew every student would soon ring the bell that meant their AR goal was met very well and they're grabbing shelf markers he snarled with a sneer tomorrow is the book fair it's practically here then he growled with his grinch fingers nervously drumming I must find a way to keep the book fair from coming for tomorrow, he knew all the kids who were cool would wake bright and early. They'll rush to sh off to school. They'll rush to the library to find books they need. And they'll read, and they'll read, and they'll read, 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 read. They would start on the Hunger Games and then Catching Fire, which was something that really brought out Grinch's ire. And then, then they'll do something he found really vile. They'll hold their certificates and pose if they smile. Our goals have been met. They all start to sing, and Miss Donaldson will offer, and the bell they could ring. They'll ring, and they'll ring, and they'll ring, 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 ring. And the more the Grinch thought of the student's success, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole mess. Why, for 24 years, I've put up with it now. I must stop the book fair from coming, but how? Then he got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch guy, wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do. The Grinch laughed until he hurt, and he quickly tie-dyed an ABE shirt. And he chuckled and clucked, I'll get them believing. With a t-shirt and a wig, I'll look just like Mrs. Streaming. All I need is a helper. The Grinch looked around. But since helpers are scarce, there is none to be found. Did that stop the Grinch? Ha! The Grinch simply said. If I can't find a helper, I'll recruit one instead. So he took his dog, Max, and he took a small pen. And he placed a green badge under poor Max's chin. With the green visit badge and its plastic veneer, Max easily passed for a parent volunteer. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a squeaky wheel book cart, and he whistled for Max. Then the Grinch said, giddy up, and old Max pushed the cart to the colorful halls that displayed the kids' art. The library was empty, school hadn't begun, 
the kids still at bus stops, awaiting the fun. When he came to the first wheeled bookcase, he hissed. This is stop number one, and he unclenched his fist. He carefully, quietly undid the hook, he swung the case open, and found the first book. The bookcase's hinges gave him a pinch. If parents could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got distracted but once for a moment or two, as his eye caught some book about Cindy Lou Who. Now his gaze quickly back to the shelf way below, where the picture books stood on a display and he wrote, These children books are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk and showed no contrition while he took every book, every printed edition. Clifford, the wimpy kid, drowned on Satan. Adventures and dramas, young adult and nonfiction. And he stuffed them in bags, and with joy in his heart, the Grinch loaded all the book bags on his cart. Then he slunk to the fairy tales, and the sparkle stars, too, took books of all color dots, gray, pink, dark blue. He cleaned out the mysteries, Hardy Boys and Nancy Drews. Why, that Grinch even took their last Dr. Seuss. He loaded his cart with the stealth of a mouse. And now, grinned the Grinch, for the magic treehouse. With a book in his hand, he saw two of the chairs. When he heard a small voice ask for Berenstein Bears, he turned around fast and he saw a young lass who had in her hand an open library pass. The Grinch had been caught by the second grade child. We've come down to return the call of the wild. She stared at the Grinch and said, Mrs. Strebing, why? Why are you taking this book, Pierre Book? Why? But you know that old Grinch. He was so smart and so slick. He thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot, the fake Mrs. Strebing lied. There's a rip in this book cover on the back side. So I'm taking it over to Mrs. Donaldson, my dear. She'll tape it up there, then I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child, then he smiled at the lass. And he took her to a book and he sent her to class. And when the young student had finally left, he went to his book cart and continued his theft. Then the last book he took was The Goblet of Fire. And he wheeled his cart to the hall, the old liar. On the library walls, he left nothing but a liar. And the one little book that he left in the joint hadn't even a quiz, wasn't worth one point. Then he did the same thing to schools across town, leaving books with no points for kids to write down. It was a quarter past day, all the kids filing in, hanging up backpacks when he thought with a grin. I have all their book fair books, the new ones and classics, the wish list money, the posters and graphics. He watched through the window, all the children walk in, to put last week's library books in the bin. Poo poo to the kitties, he said, grinchily humming. They're finding out now that no book fair is coming. They're just starting library. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then all the students will all cry boo hoo. That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. He paused, and the Grinch put a hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. But this, this sound wasn't sad. This sound sounded glad. He stared at that window. The Grinch rubbed his eyes. He stared at Great Law at a shocking surprise. Every student in school with the cheeriest looks was sharing stories from their favorite books. He hadn't stopped Book Fair from coming. It came! Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without covers. It came without pages. It came without posters or gifts for all ages. He puzzled and puzzled till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe love for a reading, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe reading, perhaps, means a little bit more. And then the true value of reading came through, and the Grinch wanted books to check out. But just two. And what happened then? Well, in school, they say, 
that the Grinch moved into the library that day. And he started to think of much more than himself. He brought back the books and made his place on the shelf. He smiled as he thought of the joys that kids took in finding that magical favorite book. The end.